The Highbike EQX0 was a state-of-the-art EMTB only 10 years ago. In fact, it was one of the only EMTBs of that time. This though is a cutting edge bike of 2023. It's a lot, lot more bike. But then again, there are also a lot more bikes on the market. Competition is hot in an age where one blink and you'll miss yet another brand arrive on the scene. And yet the class, the really innovative bikes are surprisingly rare. So join me then on a journey to scan the bikes that really have made a difference of the past decade. I think the first bike on the list then has to be that high bike EQX0 of 2012, 2013 vintage. You have to credit High Bike for creating possibly the first ever true off-road e-mountain bike. Yes, it was clunky, it was short, it was steep, it was high, and by today's standards, everything was external, but definitely a moment in time with that bike. Soon after that, 2014 was an incredibly busy year for so many brands now that the new generation Bosch Moto is around. High Bike with the X0 Enduro is a new bike, but they are no longer alone, oh no. In 2014, bikes from Trek with the Powerfly FS, Nikolai E-Box 2, Simple on KTM, Giant and Flyer all showcased their bikes at Eurobike that year, most sporting the new Bosch Performance line or CX Motor. Now I'm tempted to add the Cube Stereo Hybrid as bike number two. After all, it was a pretty special bike for me. It was one of the first EMTBs I rode, although I did ride my first one in 2013 at the Enduro World Series. Remember, this era was all about Enduro MTB. But I think the Cube Stereo, uh, I think because it actually, rep what it's for, it represented. It was one of the first main mainstream mountain bike brands to fully go the way of e-mountain bikes. Uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, it had the Bosch motor. It was 60 Newton meters at 140 mil travel. It had a reverb, one of the first reverb seat posts, 21.3 kilos for that bike, with a 400 watt hour battery. It had big, huge displays on it, uh, but the price of 5,299 euros. As we move into 2015, Bosch take things up with a 75 Newton meter performance CX motor as the leading motor brand, and yet Bros also have a motor too with the Rottweil RE Plus One, a mighty fine looking bike with internal battery. It's got good geometry numbers, a 66 head angle, 74 C2 angle, and 455 mil chainstays. However, it's 7,000 euros but it's the RG Plus that really was a banger the following year, featuring Richie Slay and a fairy. Make your dreams come true. And dreams really did come true because in 2015, my bike number two is the Specialized Turbo Levo 6 Fatty. It was launched in 2015, but it actually was relaunched in 2016 after some uh, fine tuning to it. I mean, it really was groundbreaking. It uh, was the first e-mountain bike that was disguised as a mountain bike. It had a low profile cockpit with no display, it had a very small remote on there, an internal removable 500 watt hour battery. But I think the main thing, it had an app. I mean, who would have thought you could have an app where you could customize the whole, the whole support levels and details of your bike? But hey, let's not kid ourselves that there weren't other things going on in the e-mountain bike world. Remember, 2016 was the year that Yamaha launched its first motor. M1 were already on the scene with the mighty TQ HP120 motor. And Highbike also had an app for their e-mountain bikes too. The BMC Trail Fox amp did arrive on the scene in 2017. It came in at 10,000 euros and had that hollow core down tube, which was kind of the trend with e-mountain bikes back in the day. However, innovation number three has to be Nico Vulius's Lapierre Overvolt. It is all about lightweight and weight distribution. This wasn't just a bike with a motor and battery bolted onto it, although I do remember Nico had zip tied the battery onto the top of the motor. The great thing about this bike, it was a complete system. So Nico had thought about everything. He'd thought about how you can lift the front wheel and the back wheel and the geometry. I think the geometry really is of the time. I mean, we're looking at a 475 chainstay on the stock bike. Nico had taken this down to 455. 340 millimeter bottom bracket, super low, so Nico can get around the corners even faster than he normally does. 
But obviously, Nico went on to develop this bike even further. He went on to put a, a Bosch motor on it. He changed from 27.5 to 29, 27.5. He, I think he shortened the chain state even further. He made it even more lightweight. This is definitely a truly innovative bike. Now, whilst we're in this 2017-2018 era, let's not forget focus with the rail system, whereby they had an internal battery in the down tube and you could bolt on an extra battery onto that down tube, it gives you extra range. But I think, and you might be surprised with this, that uh, bike number four has got to be the Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play. And the reason for this, I think, is the fact that it's got a mighty 108 newton meter motor, which allowed me to tackle climbs I simply had never dreamt I'd be able to do. I mean, the funny thing was, it was held back by super short chain stays on the bike, uh, 423 to 426 chain stays, which meant that you were constantly trying to fight uh, the weight in the front of the bike. Remember, it did have an internal 632 watt hour battery. It was 21 kilos for a 160 bike, which was super lightweight at the time, uh, but a cost of, I think it was around 9,700 euros. So let's summarize then. I mean, we've already got high capacity batteries. We've got lightweight in, in the Rocky Mountain Power Play. We've got Nico, you know, making, making changes to bikes. So I think, I think this, this era definitely was a time when we saw things go on the upward trajectory in terms of development. Now, one of the things we certainly didn't have during this time, although I have to say that the Merida E160 was a fantastic value at uh, 5,000 euros, but I think possibly the best innovation for consumers was the Vitus E Summit of 2018. Now, this bike had fantastic geometry. I mean, you're looking at 65 head angle, 75 degree uh, C2 angle, which got your weight over the front, 444 mil chainstay, and a reach of 475 in large. Now, I think this package, which included the Shimano E8000 motor, definitely was a bike that made e-mountain biking much more accessible, certainly in terms of hard-hitting mid-travel bikes. Now, bike number six on my list is the Specialized Levo Gen 2 Superlight 700 Watt Hour Battery. The Levo was a very special bike for many more reasons too. They had mounted the battery into the down tube now. As I mentioned, it was 700 watt hours, but easily removable. They had a new handlebar remote, which was sleeker than ever before, but they also had a new turbo connect display on the top tube. Very much something that is copied today. 150 mm travel, 29 inch wheels, 90 Nm of torque, customizable support, nice sleek display which you can take or leave, and prices starting at 4,500 to 11,000 euros. Having said that, I think even Specialized would say that the Levo is actually still a work in progress, and certainly in terms of the geometry numbers, they still had room to expand the size of those bikes, which they did so in future years with the new S sizing. What else happened in 2019? Ah yes, the high bike fly-on. Was that innovative? I'll let you guys let us know in the comments down below. It certainly turned people's attention at Eurobike, that's for sure. Uh, I think though, number seven on the list has got to be the Lapierre e -Zesti. Now this was the beginnings of a new sort of breed of e-mounted bikes, the lightweight breed, which featured the Fazua evasion system. I rode this bike in the south of France on some mighty rocks. I think the, the big story here is the fact that Lapierre, in conjunction with uh, Fazua, developed that motor. Remember, we rode the Ride 60 system uh, last year, and it really is a true story of innovation and fine-tuning a great motor to produce some of the first lightweight e-mounted bikes. 2020, Specialized Turbo Levo SL launched in South Africa, um, sub 17 kilos, uh, 320 watt hour battery, 150 mil travel, innovative. I don't know, I don't know about that one, I think possibly, however I spent most of the time in the launch in South Africa in a tent with Covid, so uh, I don't think I want to be reminded of that too much, but definitely a super lightweight, super nimble bike which uh, took lightweight e-minded bikes to the next level. 
2021 then, a lot happened during that year. Some incredibly amazing bikes. I think one of my favorite was the Cybro Industries bike from Bassano di Grappa in Italy. But there was others too. There was the Scott Patron with the with internal drive and battery. There was bikes such as the new Rottweiler bikes. Now Rottweiler always been at the forefront of, of innovations. The Orbea Rise with the EP8 RS motor. What about that one? Some amazing geometry on that bike for sure. Then of course there was the Kelly's bike, the 170mm Kelly's bike, which had the new uh, carbon frame material with integrated steel. And of course Merida came out with the new E160 and the EP8 motors. So lots went on in 2021, but I'm not actually gonna pick a bike from that year for sure. And the reason for that is because I think some of those bikes weren't launched until 2022. Remember, there's some also great bikes launched in that year as well. The Uno bikes from uh, Cesar Rojo in Barcelona comes on the scene with the new Bosch motor. Certainly pretty groundbreaking in terms of, of the design and geometry of that bike. But for me, I think the Trek rail is pretty close on the list. And the reason for that it's not about the materials or the motor or the battery, simply because of the geometry of the bike. I think this is one of the best geometry bikes or e mounted bikes ever produced. I'll just give you a rundown of the numbers here. We're looking at a reach of 487 in size large. Remember, the reach had gone up from the previous year. So now a size large is definitely a bike which fits me. Uh, 447 chainstay, sweet spot, I think. Uh, 77 CT bangle, brilliant. Uh, 341 mil bottom bracket, just the right height to get a good cornering. A head angle of 64.5, wheelbase 1278, and a front center of 831. I'm gonna come on to that in a minute because bike number nine for me is definitely the 2022 Canyon Spectral CFR. Now, I know that Norco were one of the first to come with a 900 watt hour battery, but it was simply the way that Canyon had integrated that 900 watt hour battery into the down tube. We could have a 720 watt hour battery as well, but it was, it's so easy to, to remove that battery, which is you know fantastic for many people who are traveling. Uh, the great thing about this bike, it actually, in terms of the geometry numbers, it actually does mirror the track in so many ways. However, I go for the XL version of the Canyon Spectral over the L, and simply because it's got a slightly longer front center. I can ride the L for sure, but I think it's the XL which makes me most comfortable in terms of climbing and descending. But what makes this bike so special is the fact you can, or Canyon proves you can actually have a long range e-mounted bike that is still agile. And that all comes down to the geometry and also the suspension design and, and uh, shock tune on the bike. An amazing bike, I have immense fun riding it. Which leaves only one more bike, uh, and that is the Trek Fuel EXE. Now, light to mid assist bikes are my cup of tea, but I think what this bike allows and, and the technology on this bike is truly incredible. Mainly the TQ motor and the geometry of a fantastic all-round trail bike from Trek. Remember the TQ motor is possibly, well maybe is, the quietest e-mounted bike motor on the market and I think the whole package just makes it so appealing for people who want to make the transition from mountain biking to e-mountain biking. So that's it folks, that's my pick of the mix of innovative bikes that I think make the cuts in the past decade. Let us know which bikes you think are the most important bikes. Obviously there are bikes which I think are probably close to the mark there, but um, I deliberately focused on the bikes, the whole package themselves, rather than the fine details of displays and batteries, because next time I'm gonna have a look at e-bike motor innovations. Join me then.